The story begins with the main lead returning from a food delivery and announcing her return. Someone addresses the main lead, asking if he is coming back to work starting today, calling him Appa. He then inquires if Su Jung is still working there, to which she replies that she started again last week. Appa expresses surprise, saying he thought she was going to quit her part-time job to find a real job. Su Jung assures him that she is planning to, mentioning she had an interview recently. Appa skeptically recalls that she said the same thing last time, but Su Jung insists that this time it will happen. Appa remarks that he thought there would be more job openings now that the androids are gone, but it seems that isn't the case. Frustrated, Su Jung responds that androids are used in the service industry and don't affect her situation. Appa jokes that androids are needed in chicken places since frying chicken in the midsummer heat is unbearable, wondering if people who make androids don't eat chicken. Su Jung counters that if they use androids as employees, they wouldn't be able to afford the rent for the place. Meanwhile, their boss arrives and asks what they are talking about. Su Jung and Appa quickly respond that they are discussing how they will work even harder. The boss then tells them to finish their break and make the delivery. Su Jung acknowledges with a yes, sir. Later that night, Su Jung returns home and reads a message that thanks her for her application but informs her that she has been rejected due to the limited number of applicants they could accept despite her qualifications. Frustrated, Su Jung thinks about being rejected once again and worries about her finances, which are strained after spending money on summer school and the interview. She contemplates whether it would be better to move to the city or go to Seoul immediately. Then, Su Jung receives a message from her Unni asking what's up. Seeing the message, Su Jung thinks about her Unni and responds that she is home but will go to her part-time job soon. Unni inquires about her interview and Su Jung admits she didn't get the job. Unni comments that she still doesn't have a real job. Then, Su Jung receives a phone call and answering. A lady on the other end asks if she needs work and tells her to come to Seoul as she has something for her to do. When Su Jung arrives at Seoul Station, she stands there thinking about the heat. She notices security guards detaining a boy. Curious, Su Jung asks what's happening. People nearby explain that it's an android and they express surprise that some were still around, remarking how scary it is and noting that the android had been working at the information desk. Su Jung reflects on how many things have been replaced by machines, starting with self-service kiosks, followed by animal holograms and robot pets and eventually machines in human form. She thinks that this trend mainly interests the wealthy and although this is her first time seeing an android in person, she was never particularly interested in machines. She questions why they had to make androids look like real people as it makes her uncomfortable. Su Jung then notes that the place where the lady lies is nicer than she expected and feels very nervous. In the elevator, a boy addresses Su Jung, confirming her name. Su Jung responds hesitantly hello. The boy tells her he has been waiting for her. Confused, Su Jung asks who he is and how he knows her sister, wondering to herself if her sister had a boyfriend she hadn't mentioned. The boy then clarifies, asking if his owner, Miss Sunjin, had not informed her of his existence. Su Jung is taken aback and imagines what her sister might be up to, wondering if she's lost her mind. The boy, referring to Miss Sunjin as his owner, invites Su Jung inside, but she nervously declines, saying she'll come back when her sister is home. The boy insists, mentioning that his owner instructed him to serve Su Jung with utmost care. Su Jung, feeling overwhelmed, repeats that she'll come back later. Suddenly, the boy's finger gets caught in the elevator door and breaks off, falling to the floor. Panicking, Su Jung exclaims that she'll call an ambulance and suggests they stop the bleeding. The boy calmly asks Su Jung to relax, indicating that she must not have been informed by his owner about his nature. Shocked, Su Jung realizes that the boy is an android, a robot that looks like a human. Su Jung goes to meet the lady who laughs and tells Su Jung that she is hilarious. Su Jung replies that she wasn't trying to be funny and questions if her sister, Calling her Unni is out of her mind, warning that reporting this could make her a criminal. Unni challenges her, asking if she is really going to report her. Su Jung retorts, asking if Unni thinks she won't do it. Unni confidently replies that she doesn't believe Su Jung will. Feeling insulted, Su Jung tells Unni not to underestimate her. Unni then mentions that Su Jung must not need a job that pays 20 bucks an hour. Quickly changing her tone, Su Jung asks Unni to indeed underestimate her. Unni sarcastically addresses Su Jung, saying she assumes Su Jung will keep quiet about the situation. Frustrated, Su Jung expresses how annoying Unni is, to which Unni readily agrees. Su Jung then inquires about the job Unni wants her to do. Unni theatrically announces that the job is to take care of her android. The android politely introduces himself to Su Jung, who is shocked. Unni explains that she won't be home for a while and asks Su Jung to look after the android until she returns. Su Jung protests, saying that if it was something like this, Unni should have discussed it with her first. Unni responds that it would have been pointless since she knew Su Jung was going to do it anyway. 
Su Jung reluctantly admits that Unni is annoyingly right, but still she feels it's too sudden and mentions that she doesn't have a place to stay or any of her belongings. Unni suggests that Su Jung can live there. Su Jung thinks of herself about living with an android, just the two of them, and decides she doesn't want to. She expresses that it would make her uncomfortable. Unni, finding her picky, offers to get her a study room nearby so she can live there instead. Su Jung then questions whether they should tell their mom about this. Unni sarcastically suggests that if Su Jung wants to see their mom pass out, she should go ahead and tell her. Finally, Unni instructs Su Jung to go get what she needs from her house and come back. Su Jung exclaims, asking if Unni wants her to go right now. Unni, stating that she is a busy woman, tells Su Jung that she will send the address once she gets a room for her and instructs her not to be late. Unni then says she will see Su Jung in four days. Su Jung on the bus home thinks to herself that Unni is crazy. Once home, she drops her bag on the floor and lies on the bed thinking that Wu Sunjin has finally lost her mind. She recalls how her sister studied like crazy to get into a college in Seoul, and after securing a job, worked so hard that she never once visited home. Su Jung remembers asking Unni if she wanted to go see a movie, to which Unni replied that she was busy. She also recalls a boy asking if Sunjin was not coming again, with Unni responding that she guessed not. While thinking to herself, Su Jung reflects that she's glad she didn't study or work too hard like her sister. She realizes that she tends to have nonsensical thoughts and decides she must tell her sister that she can't do it. Su Jung is determined not to become a criminal, no matter how much she needs the money, as she considers herself a law-abiding citizen. Later, she reads a message on her phone about a withdrawal from her bank account. Despite her earlier convictions, Su Jung acknowledges that sometimes you have to do what you have to do, considering her financial situation and the possibility of taking on sketchy jobs. She expresses gratitude towards her sister. Three days later, Su Jung finds the android lying on the floor and asks what happened. The android apologizes and requests her help to get up, mentioning that his charger is upstairs. Su Jung lifts the android and places him near the charger, thinking about how she never thought she'd see an android up close and noting how much he resembles a human. When she asks if it's already over, the android responds that he's not fully charged, but can move enough to get her a cup of coffee. The android returns with the coffee and apologizes, explaining that he doesn't usually have a reason to move around much, but he was getting some things ready and forgot to charge himself. Su Jung responds that she's glad it wasn't a big emergency and questions how an eye can forget something like charging. The android then informs Su Jung that she doesn't have to speak so formally to him from now on, dropping the miss from her name. Su Jung expresses her discomfort with being called miss out of nowhere. The android explains that it's the name his owner set for her. Su Jung thinks of herself about her sister frustrated with her, and then suggests they change it later. She then asks for the android's name, but he responds that he doesn't have one. The android then comments on Unni, asking Su Jung to fetch him some coffee and to come over to him. The android explains to Su Jung that his owner, Unni, only refers to him like this and never gave him a name. Su Jung thinks to herself that Unni is like an aunt who has forgotten her nephew's name. She then asks the android if it's inconvenient not having a name and suggests asking her sister to give him one. The android responds that he hasn't experienced any inconvenience from not having a name and explains that an android can't ask for something from its owner. Stu Jung reflects on how things that seemed distant to her suddenly became present, like the android that's probably been discarded by now, her sister whom she can't understand, and the situation right in front of her. She realizes that this situation is making her uncomfortable, especially the odd feeling she gets from the android. She notices that she can't see anything in its eyes. They hold neither anger nor happiness, just the expressionless gaze of a machine. The android tells Su Jung that an android can't ask for something from its owner. Su Jung responds awkwardly, realizing how uncomfortable the situation is. When Unni opens the door and enters, Su Jung quickly exclaims that her sister is there, greeting her. The android welcomes Unni back, addressing her formally. Su Jung demands to know what took her so long. Unni explains that she came to check on the android after noticing his battery had died and didn't know Su Jung was already there. Laughing, she adds that she thought Su Jung would take much longer to decide and asks if she is that desperate for money. Su Jung denies this, saying she came early because it's now her job. Su Jung then asks Unni to come over for a moment. When Unni asks why, Su Jung quietly tells her that the android is a little something. Unni interrupts and instructs the android to go put something upstairs and finish charging. The android obediently agrees and heads upstairs. Su Jung questions what kind of android forgets to charge itself and asks, if there's something wrong with him. Unni asks if that's what the android said. Su Jung then demands Unni fix the name she set for her in the android system, asking what's with Miss Su Jung. Unni laughs and tells Su Jung to just enjoy it, saying it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be called that. When Su Jung protests again, Unni agrees to fix it. 
Anian sits on the sofa and tells Sujung she doesn't need to stay any longer that day. She informs her that she texted her the address of her room and some other details. Sujung, surprised, asks about the room. Ani explains that it's not much, but it was the only place she could get for her right away. When Sujung inquires about what else Ani sent, Ani tells her to see for herself. Sujung, looking at her phone, thinks to herself that the place isn't far but isn't close either, knowing it's quite a walk from where she is. She then asks Ani why she sent her the app. Ani explains that it's an app used to chat on how the Android is doing. Sujung admits that she doesn't understand what any of it says and asks if Android owners get one all memes when they use the app. She then asks if the name is written somewhere in the app. Ani responds that it's not and asks why. Sujung tells her that the Android said it doesn't even have a name and suggests giving it one. Ani replies that she doesn't know what to call it and asks if Sujung gives her phone or computer a name. Surprise, Sujung admits that she doesn't. Ani explained that she was just kidding, admitting she was bad at naming things and couldn't think of one she liked for the android. She told Sujung to call them whenever she wanted. Sujung noted that the model name was Alpha something but decided she wasn't going to call him that and suggested Ani could name him if she preferred. Sujung stepped outside, thinking about how Ani always lied to avoid upsetting her. She wondered if Ani had noticed that she had figured this out. Just then, her mom called. Sujung thought how typical it was for her mom to call at a time like this, realizing that not picking up would likely result in a hard time. Answering the phone, Sujung greeted her mom, who asked if she had reached Seul yet. Sujung replied that she was on her way to her friend's place. Sujung's mom remarked that her friend must be pretty well off to move Sujung all the way to Seul to hire her. Sujung agreed with a laugh. Her mom then inquired about the kind of work she was doing for her friend. Sujung hesitated, saying she didn't really know the specifics. Her mom expressed surprise that Sujung had signed up for a job without knowing what it entailed. Sujung tried to clarify, explaining that while she knew what she was doing, it was just hard to put into words. Her mom responded, somewhat disappointed, that she shouldn't have expected anything less from her. Sujung, trying to appease her, asked her mom not to be like that and promised to give her the details later. Sujung's mom mentioned that she wished Sujung were a bit more like Sunjin. Frustrated, Sujung ended the call, fuming about how it was always Sunjin being praised. She thought angrily about how her precious Sunjin was actually a criminal unknown to their mom. Ani had started consoling Sujung with lies when their mom began comparing her to Sunjin. Sujung mused that if she told their mom how Ani was living now, it would probably cause a huge uproar. She considered whether she should just tell her everything to get it over with. Feeling overwhelmed, she began to cry, catching the attention of a boy sitting nearby on the bus who wondered aloud what was wrong with her. Meanwhile, Ani instructed the android to wake her up in an hour as she had somewhere to go. The android confirmed setting the alarm. Ani then questioned the android about why it pretended to have forgotten to charge its battery when talking to Sujung. The android expressed confusion, stating it didn't understand what she meant. Ani reiterated her instruction to be woken up in 59 minutes. In the next scene, Sujung arrives at New One's study rooms. She thinks to herself that Ani could have found her a better place, but consoles herself by thinking it might not be that bad since Ani arranged it. Upon greeting a lady or with a hello, the lady responds nonchalantly, making Su Jung feel a bit hurt and doubtful about staying there. She worries about the stress and potential health issues that can come from living in such a confined space. As she grabs the handle of her room's door, she hopes it might be better than expected. However, upon entering, she finds the room way too small. Despite this initial disappointment, she tries to stay positive, thinking that while it's a bit cramped, it's not too bad overall. She reminds herself that she can't give up a high-paying job just because of small living quarters. Determined, she resolves to make the best of it, planning to earn well, prepare for a real job, and return to school. She views this as the light at the end of the tunnel and resolves to tackle the challenge ahead. The next morning, Sujung arrives at Ani's house. The android greets her with a hello, Miss Sujung, and she thinks to herself that Ani didn't change the name as requested. Sujung responds with a hesitant hello and the android asks for her schedule for the day. Sujung realizes she doesn't have a specific plan and questions if she's supposed to just watch the android all day. Ani reassures Sujung that she can carry on with her usual activities like studying, watching movies, going out, or staying home. Sujung reflects on her usual routine of homework, studying for tests, part-time work, and occasional gatherings with friends, realizing her life is simple and somewhat boring. Sujung asks the android what it usually does on a normal day. The android replied that when it's not cleaning, it's on standby mode. Sujung acknowledged this and then asked if the android does anything other than cleaning, to which it responded that it does not. Sujung then inquired about what the android does with her sister, to which it mentioned getting her coffee or organizing her things. Feeling a bit frustrated, Sujung clarified that she meant what the android does with her sister on a daily basis. 
The android replied that its owner is not home for most of the time. Su Jung, feeling overwhelmed, pondered to herself if it was always this difficult to converse with androids. She admitted she wouldn't know. She also considered that if she took the android outside at that moment, people would immediately recognize that he's an android. She concluded that she first needed to demonstrate to him how normal people converse and what they enjoy. Then, addressing the android, Su Jung suggested watching video clips together and invited him to sit on the sofa. The android declined, explaining that the sofa belonged to his owner so he couldn't sit on it. Su Jung felt frustrated, wondering if he was doing it intentionally. She then suggested sitting on the floor together, asking if he was allowed to sit there. When the android agreed to sit on the floor, Su Jung felt relieved, thinking their conversation was finally making progress. She connected her phone to the TV, and they watched video clips together. The android expressed disinterest in watching the video clips. Su Jung wondered if it was a bad idea and realized that an android might not be interested in online videos like those. As a boxing clip played, both of them argued over the content. Su Jung's thoughts raced as various scenarios unfolded and she assumed she must have pressed the clip by accident. She chuckled at the situation and noticed that the android seemed to enjoy watching soap opera clips. Su Jung suggested watching some news. The girl on TV reported that they were facing the hottest hit wave in 110 years, making it difficult to even stay upright. Su Jung wondered why the TV turned back on and if she had accidentally pressed something. The TV continued to report on temperatures exceeding 40 degrees Celsius in some regions. Su Jung questioned if the TV was switching channels because of interference. Before androids became illegal, they were employed in service roles equipped only with job relevant information. Su Jung wondered if this unusual situation was stimulating the android's circuits, as it wasn't typical for them. She then asked if androids could function as remote controls and if the video was particularly interesting to it. The android responded with confusion, claiming not to understand. Su Jung suspected it was feigning innocence, believing it was secretly enjoying the video despite its denial. She felt conflicted as while she didn't mind showing the android things it liked, it felt inappropriate akin to showing something to a child that they shouldn't be seeing. After Su Jung said they would stop watching the video and that it wasn't a good idea to continue showing it, she mentioned she would come up with something better for the next day. Realizing it was lunchtime, she decided to quickly grab some lunch and promise to return. After Su Jung left, the android stood up from the floor and sat on the sofa. Then it muttered to itself, expressing annoyance. When Su Jung returned to get her wallet, she realized she had forgotten it and excused herself momentarily. As she left to retrieve her wallet, the android stood up again. Su Jung laughed, realizing her bag was upstairs and assured the android to make itself comfortable while she went to get it, expressing confusion as to why it kept standing up. Upon arriving at the market, Su Jung thought about how he appeared to enjoy soap operas, speculating that he might also enjoy movies. She suggested searching for wholesome ones. Subsequently, she began searching for movie recommendations. As she sat on a bench later, she pondered, expressing surprise that he liked soap operas. She questioned whether it was possible for an android to have preferences. Observing his apparent enjoyment, she found herself seeking alternatives to entertain him. Despite acknowledging that an android is merely a machine, she found it challenging not to treat it like a human. She wondered why people had designed androids to be so human-like in the first place. Su Jung arrived at her friend's place at night and exclaimed, Guys. One of the boys asked her what took her so long, to which she simply greeted. Su Jung then expressed how it had been such a long time since they last met. A girl inquired about what was going on with her and a boy playfully suggested that Su Jung might already be a few drinks in. The girl then asked Su Jung what brought her all the way to Seoul and a boy chimed in, noting that she never visited even though they had repeatedly told her to come. Su Jung thought to herself that she was a busy woman and then announced that she came for work and that she had a job. Upon hearing this, the boy curiously asked what she did for work. Su Jung hesitated a bit before revealing that it was just a job her sister had given her. The girl asked if Su Jung's sister, Sun Jin, was in Seoul as well, which seemed to surprise Su Jung. The boy asked if she knew Su Jung's sister, to which Su Jung confirmed, asking if he knew her sister too. The girl clarified that she didn't know the sister, but her mother was close with Su Jung's mother. Su Jung acknowledged that she understood the situation now. The girl hinted that she could see what was coming, prompting a boy to ask why and what it was. The girl mentioned that Su Jung's sister had attended one of the best schools, which the boy confirmed he knew. The girl then shared that her mother had told her about Sun Jin's journey from rags to riches and often compared her to Sun Jin. Su Jung apologized, suggesting that her mother tends to talk a lot about her sister, to which the girl replied that it was okay and she didn't care as much about it anymore. However, she admitted that her mother's cessation of talking about Sun Jin had piqued her curiosity even more, and she was curious to see how Sun Jin was doing. Su Jung thought to herself that her sister might be doing something that could land her in jail. 
The girl sensed Su Jung's reluctance to talk about it and confronted her. Su Jung stood up and asked emphatically whether they wanted to talk about her or her sister. The boy, trying to ease the tension, suggested they change the subject and ask Su Jung what she'd been up to lately. Su Jung thought to herself in frustration, questioning why she would make herself the new target and urged herself to say anything to divert the conversation. She then hesitantly told her friends that she wanted to get some advice from them. One of the boys asked if it was about work or a boy, to which Su Jung awkwardly repeated, a boy. The boy suggested they hang on for a moment as he was going to order some food while the girl requested some popcorn, expressing their eagerness to hear what Su Jung had to say. Su Jung admitted that she had made a mistake with a boy and was unsure how to fix it. Both friends asked what kind of mistake it was. Su Jung replied that it was personal and not very common, making it embarrassing to talk about. Their surprise was evident, and the girl asked what the boy had said. Su Jung explained that he hadn't said anything, but she believed he liked it, although his innocence made her feel guilty. The boy then asked with a hint of concern if she was dating a minor. Su Jung was taken aback by the suggestion that she was talking about a minor, clarifying with exasperation that it wasn't about someone she was dating. The girl expressed her surprise and the boy questioned whether it was something embarrassing even though Su Jung wasn't dating. Su Jung urged them to lower their voices as they were attracting attention and admonished them for letting their thoughts wander into inappropriate territory. The girl retorted that Su Jung had led them to think that way. Su Jung then attempted to steer the conversation back to her original intention of asking for advice, pulling out her phone to show a list of movies she intended to show someone. She asked if they could recommend a few more similar to those on her list. The girl remarked that they had ordered popcorn for nothing, indicating their anticipation for a more sensational story. The boy asked to see the list, which included categories like top five children's movies, top ten family movie recommendations, and movies to watch with elementary and middle schoolers. After reviewing the list, both the girl and the boy couldn't help but teasingly ask Su Jung again if she was sure she wasn't dating a minor. The boy questioned Su Jung, asking if she was really not going to reveal the kind of person he was. The girl added that Su Jung didn't have to share if she didn't want to, but hoped it wasn't anything shady. Su Jung flustered, denied looking like a criminal, although she thought to herself that she was currently aiding in a crime. The girl expressed her concern for Su Jung, reminding her of her history with men. Stu Jung understood their concern and assured them it was nothing worrisome. The boy then said they were there for her if she decided to open up. Su Jung was puzzled by his comment, which led the boy to list some of her worst ex-boyfriends, highlighting their negative traits. The girl advised Su Jung to think about all the odd individuals she had encountered, while the boy suggested she consult them before dating anyone new. Su Jung asked them to stop, admitting that the fault might not entirely be on her past partners, acknowledging her own part in the failed relationships. The boy, however, pressed her to share more about her current dating situation, asking about the age of the person she was seeing. The girl also showed interest, asking about his occupation and if Su Jung had a picture of him. Su Jung expressed her frustration with her friend's prying questions. One of the boys inquired about where the person lived and if he was attractive. Su Jung, feeling pressured, decided to share some information to satisfy their curiosity. She clarified that they were not dating and there was nothing romantic between them, hence she did not have a picture. She mentioned that he worked with robots and machines, thinking to herself that it was because he was an android. When pressed about his age, she thought he was probably younger than her again because he was an android. The boy asked by how much, and the girl commented that she didn't expect Su Jung to be interested in someone like that. Su Jung internally noted that he was about 20-something years younger than her. When asked about his appearance, she hesitated but admitted that he was good-looking. The boy's curiosity was piqued by the mention of a handsome, younger man, and he eagerly asked for his name. Su Jung started to reveal his name but then decided against sharing any more details, leaving her friends disappointed just as the conversation was getting intriguing. Upon returning home, Su Jung reflected on the difficulty of fabricating stories. She had wanted to enjoy herself fully since it had been a long time, but she chose to come home early out of fear that she might reveal the truth if she drank too much. She pondered over the longevity of maintaining her lies, realizing that she couldn't keep them up indefinitely and that her friends would eventually uncover the truth. However, she consoled herself by acknowledging that not everything she said was a lie. Some parts were rooted in reality. In her thoughts, she considered the android's handsome appearance, noting that androids are designed to be aesthetically pleasing. She also mused over the fact that he was related to robots, being an android himself and likely a newly released model. She found humor in the fact that she couldn't even concoct a name for him when her friends inquired. As Su Jung lay in bed, she pondered over the concept of names, recalling her sister's question of whether she named her phone or computer. She considered how lonely it might feel if the person living with her didn't even use her name. She hoped that by starting to use names, the android would stop addressing her as Miss Su Jung. 
The next morning, the android reiterated to Sujum that it had not experienced any inconvenience from not having a name, still referring to her formally. Sujum thought to herself that of course the android hadn't felt inconvenience. She suggested to the android that what she called it didn't have to be permanent and asked how it felt about a temporary name, asserting that it wasn't a big deal. The android, not understanding the reasoning behind the proposal, but acknowledging that Sujung was in charge, agreed to accept any name she chose. It informed her that once she made her first input, it would refer to her as Mayam instead of Miss Sujung. Sujung cursed under her breath, realizing she hadn't fully understood the implications of naming the android. After some thought, she tentatively suggested the name Alpha, explaining that it could serve as a nickname since she had heard that the model's name began with Alpha. She quickly added that it didn't have to be its real name and expressed doubt about her choice, admitting it was just a spontaneous idea. The android accepted the name Alpha and registered it, addressing Sujung as Ma'am. Surprised by the android's prompt acceptance, Sujung hastily asked if it was possible to revert the change, wondering if she could cancel the entire process, taken aback by how easily the android had accepted the name. The android informed her that any registered information could be changed or deleted after six months. It then invited her to come inside, seeing no reason for her to remain standing at the door. Sujung acquiesced, stepping inside while internally panicking, questioning what she had just done. She berated herself, contrasting her current regret with her earlier impulsiveness. The android requested Sujung's schedule for the day, to which she responded that she had brought a few movies that she hadn't seen before and thought it would be enjoyable to watch them together. The android acknowledged the plan to watch movies. Sujung, with a laugh, suggested sitting in the same spot as before. Internally, she told herself to calm down and focus on the task at hand, despite her earlier anxiety about the name she had hastily chosen for the android. As they watched the movie, Su Jung's thoughts were filled with worry about the impulsive decision she had made regarding the android's name, though she couldn't change for six months and the prospect of being called ma'am during that time. The android noticed her discomfort and inquired if something was wrong. Su Jung brushed it off, saying she was just thinking about something. Her attention then turned to the TV, where the main couple in the movie quickly became intimate. She expressed her eagerness to see what would happen next. However, as the scene progressed to a more forward interaction, with the girl in the movie grabbing the boy's tie and the boy starting to undress, Sujung panicked and was shocked, wondering why the scene wasn't skipping to the next as she had expected. Sujung, addressing the android, hesitantly said that she didn't know. The android then asked if this was the content she was expecting. Sujung started to respond, but the android continued, stating that information about human reproductive activities had already been input. Alarmed, Sujung shouted for it to stop, explaining that she didn't choose that particular video and requested to watch something else, asking the android to erase the content from its memory. The android complied, saying it would do as she wished. Reflecting on the situation, Sujung wondered why such a recommendation was made to her, questioning if it was meant as a joke and pondering what life would be like without humor. She then changed the channel, and on the TV, a boy asked who was there, followed by a conversation about hearing water dripping from above, which revealed a witch above them. Frightened, Su Jung hid behind a chair, muttering that she was going to kill them and rationalizing that they weren't that close anyway. The android approached and found her, to which Su Jung apologized and asked if the scene was over, explaining that she really hated horror movies. The android, understanding, stated that it had skipped over the intense parts and reassured her that she could come out now. Su Jung, feeling it chill and wondering if it was just her imagination, thought to herself that it was probably nothing. The android asked if they should end the movie there, to which Su Jung quickly agreed, saying she would appreciate it. She then suggested they watch something random on a streaming site. The android agreed and said it would put on something random and Su Jung requested that adult content be filtered out. However, as they continued watching, Su Jung felt as if only horror movies were playing. She closed her eyes tightly asking if it was over and if she could open her eyes, feeling scared but a little curious about what had just happened. Realizing she couldn't take it anymore, Su Jung opened her eyes and announced that it was already time for her to go and that she needed to leave. Just as she was about to go, the android expressed disappointment, saying it was too bad because they had been having a good time. Upon arriving home, Su Jung thought to herself how exhausted she was. She was bewildered by the android's comment about having a good time and couldn't understand how he could say that after seeing how scared she was, especially since she had told him she didn't like horror movies. Reflecting further, she wondered if he had been watching her reaction instead of the movie. The idea that he might have enjoyed seeing her scared made her feel embarrassed. She hadn't considered it earlier because she had only come home to sleep, but she realized that her place wasn't soundproof at all. It felt cramped and stuffy, and she thought that if it was bad for her staying there for a short while, it must be the same for the android who had been locked up inside the house. Understanding why he might have been entertained by watching her, 
Soon-Jung decided that the next day she would look for something they could both genuinely enjoy. She then messaged her friends expressing her frustration and betrayal by asking how they could have done that to her and stating that she had really trusted them. She told them she wouldn't forgive them for this and that they were dead to her. One of her friends quickly responded with an apology, saying they were sorry. The next morning, Soo Jung and the android went to the city. Soo Jung suggested that it might be beneficial for the android to do something other than watching movies. She mentioned that many people raise pets or grow plants and asked if he had ever thought about doing that. She pointed out that there were some pots in the room, but they were all fake, and suggested that real plants might make the room feel more lively. When the android responded by asking about real plants, Soo Jung explained that she thought it might help him pass the time when he was alone. However, she wondered why he was reacting this way, noting that he didn't seem interested. Soo Jung mentioned that since she came over every day anyway, the android wouldn't have to worry about taking care of the plant by himself. The android then asked if she didn't like tomatoes, to which Soo Jung explained that she had gotten sick from eating cherry tomatoes as a kid and couldn't eat them anymore. The android agreed that having a plant was a good idea and said he would have one ready by the next day, expressing his excitement. Soo Jung was thankful he accepted her suggestion but was puzzled by his sudden change of mind. She encouraged him to find a plant he liked, laughing nervously and internally questioned why she felt so uneasy about the situation. Soo Jung thought back to her past when she used to grow cherry tomatoes at home. She remembered her mother warning her not to eat them in her own response, insisting she was just looking. She then considered sneaking one without her mother noticing and ended up picking and eating one. Her mother caught her and scolded her, reminding her that the tomatoes were meant to be given away as a present. Later, Sujung's father asked where the kids were and if they were going to eat. Her mother explained that Sunjin had gone to study, while Sujung was lying down in her room, likely because her stomach was upset from eating the tomato. She lamented how she had repeatedly told Sujung, not to eat it, and wondered why Soo Jung couldn't be more like Sun Jin. The next day, Soo Jung's mother scolded her for not eating the tomatoes she had asked for. Soo Jung recalled that since then, she had difficulty eating tomatoes and hadn't grown any edible plants, especially tomatoes, since that incident. In the present, Soo Jung thought about the tomatoes and suspected that the android was doing things she disliked on purpose. She confronted the android, asking what it was. The android explained that it was a plant and that she had suggested getting one. Since she didn't eat tomatoes, the android had prepared this plant for her healthy diet, suggesting it would help improve her picky eating habits. Soo Jung, confused and frustrated, wondered why the android was doing this. The android then started laughing. Soo Jung thought it was useless to argue with the android, realizing she shouldn't expect a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with a machine. Feeling nauseous just looking at the plant, she decided to put it away somewhere. She then suggested to the android that they place it on the roof since it was nice outside. The android agreed, knowing it would be his first time visiting the roof and explaining he couldn't carry anything over 10 kilograms due to his design as a service worker. Soo Jung carried the heavy plant, grumbling internally about the android's choice. A boy noticed her and greeted her, saying he hadn't seen her before. Soo Jung returned the greeting and thought he must be a neighbor. The boy asked if she had just moved in, mentioning that he thought a different woman with long hair lived in the apartment. Soo Jung explained that he was probably thinking of her sister and that she was only living there temporarily. The boy then promised to say hello whenever he saw her in the hallway and went back to his room. The android approached Soo Jung and inquired if she was still present. As Soo Jung moved forward, the android was about to speak, but she quickly covered its mouth with her hand. She then joked that there was something on its face. A girl observing the interaction asked Soo Jung if the android was her boyfriend and if they lived together. Soo Jung vehemently denied both, stating they were not involved romantically in any way and that they merely worked together. The girl seemed skeptical thinking Soo Jung was in denial. She then shifted her attention to a plant that appeared to be slipping from Soo Jung's grasp, but the android caught it just in time. The girl commented on the close call and questioned why they hadn't carried the plant together initially. Soo Jung replied that she didn't think the android was designed for such tasks and thanked the girl for her concern. The girl found it peculiar when Soo Jung said that he wasn't made for carrying things, a strange comment to make about one's boyfriend. Soo Jung and the android went up to the terrace, where Soo Jung internally accused the android of lying about not being able to carry the plant, noting that he had easily lifted it with one hand. After placing the plant on the terrace, she suggested going back downstairs. However, the android climbed onto the railing and stood there looking out. Soo Jung reminded herself that they were not involved in any way and that the android was not a real human. She cautioned herself against expecting anything from humans or from the android itself, warning against repeating the mistakes of other failures. She asked the android if it heard her then, growing alarmed, she shouted for it to get down from the railing. 